Hi, welcome back. This is Sunny Ray, Kwanzaa's South Asia Channel Manager. Today's presentation will be on unmanned vehicle systems. This is a video that my colleague Cameron shared with me recently. Check it out. Their slogan was to have a healthy disregard for the impossible. A healthy disregard for the impossible. And I think that's a really good slogan. And it's really stuck with me in all those years. And I think that, you know, it sounds kind of nuts, but it's often easier to make progress when you're really ambitious. And the reason is that uh, you actually don't have any competition because no one else is willing to try those things. Uh, and you also get all the best people because the best people want to work on the most ambitious things. And uh, you know, I've, I've been really struck by this over the years. One of the projects I wanted to talk about was we have this project for uh, self-driving cars. Uh, you know, and that seems really crazy. You're like, how can a car possibly drive itself? You know, how, is, how is that ever going to work? And you know, we've had a team working on that and we've driven over 200,000 miles now. Uh, with with no incidents and uh, it's really amazing to ride in one of these cars it's, it's just almost a life-changing experience you sit down you drive through a parking lot and you're like why am I driving you know it's just it's <clears throat> so if you're interested in hearing more of Larry Page's commentary you know, check out this YouTube video but uh, those that clip that you saw at the beginning there were just a couple of the projects that Kwanzaa has been involved in for many, many, many years now. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Kwanzaa has been at the forefront of real-time controls and robotics and mechatronics for uh, close to 23 years now. And, uh, and I'm going to finish this, this presentation off with some information about Kwanzaa's experiments. But... Before I do, I wanted to show a few more things from Google and some other projects around the world regarding unmanned systems. How are you? So this, is a, this is a gentleman who's blind, or 90% blind. And he gets in a car and the car starts driving. Pretty crazy, so if you haven't seen it, check out this, uh, check out this video as well. It's very intriguing. Uh, here is a test drive of the Google no hands self-driving oh, car. Yet. Well, just a little bit of keyboard hands. Are huh? we clear? Make sure you keep an eye on the knees there. Good to go. Hey guys, how are we doing? We're doing good. So we're going out for a Sunday drive, right? Five, ten miles an hour, something uh, like that. Totally. All right. On the roof the of Google self-driving car. We are in a self-driving car. You get to hold the keyboard. I do. Wait, there's characters on here I don't recognize. <laughs> Team will never believe this. Oh thing. my goodness. Go is the right word. Holy shit. Whoa. Holy shit. There's no fucking hands on that wheel. Oh my god. What? 
it's driving itself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually uh, real footage. And so here's a uh, Forbes article about self-driving cars will take over by 2040. And here they had some some nice uh, stats about how so GM's Cadillac division expects to produce mass market partially autonomous cars by 2015. Audi and BMW, Google has a fleet of autonomous Toyota Priuses, Volvo's working on their thing, ABI research. So I mean, there are a lot of major, major companies now really looking at this. And, uh, and so there's some, there's some YouTube videos about how Google's self-driving car works, and they're pretty interesting. He comes on Monterey with pedestrians. And this was all done with self-driving cars. Uh, some of the terrain is being parked uh, in our vehicles. So after going through the urban challenge... So there you go. You've got, uh, you've got a laser. So I think they call it a LiDAR but it could be a different type of laser. But this laser, this is a device that has a laser on it and it spins around really, really fast and essentially maps your surroundings. You've got your GPS, so you know where you are. <laughs> um, that most people know what GPS is. You've got a wheel encoder. So this is a, uh, almost like a digital encoder that's, <clears throat> that's telling you know, the, the computer, uh, which is the most important part, of this car uh, exactly where your wheel is and then you've got radars and you've got sensors all over uh, the, the vehicle to, as redundancy mechanisms as well. So uh, again I don't want to go through each one of these videos but just wanted to give you a few things to look at if you are interested in learning more about autonomous vehicles. Here's now a Volvo working on a similar project convenient since I can do something else th than the actual driving. It's safe since the system will take care of the driving it will eliminate the human errors and then fuel efficient since we use a minor gap size between the vehicles we will reduce air drag and thereby fuel consumption. So here's a, a massive truck. I guess that's there for its safety. I don't think that's actually automated. There we go. This is the lady that's automated. And she, you see she's reading a magazine. It's quite fun to see uh, the passing vehicles. <laughs> Hilarious. So here's another article, self-driving cars are now street legal in California. So California has become the third state to welcome driverless cars with open arms. Governor Jerry Brown signed a bill into law today that officially legalized self-driving vehicles following in the footsteps of Nevada and Florida. So I mean, it's not a matter of when, uh, it's not a matter of, sorry, whether this will happen or not, it's just a matter of when it will happen. Um, just again, talking a little bit about unmanned systems, here's a, <clears throat> a really, really interesting project that took place uh, in, I believe it's in the Grass Lab. Yeah, in the Grass Lab at the University of Pennsylvania. And this, this video really went viral last year. Double, double, and triple flips. We developed a method for flying to any position in space with any reasonable velocity or pitch angle. We use the method to fly through windows at various angles. Here there's less than three inches of clearance on all sides of the quad rotor. So if you definitely, if you haven't seen this video, <laughs> do check it out. Uh, aggressive maneuvers for autonomous quad rotor flight and there's quite a few other uh, videos on that YouTube channel as well. So next I wanted to, to move over to some of Quanzer's systems. So this is uh, the Qbot. So if you've <clears throat> heard of iRobot's uh, Roomba, the vacuum cleaner, um, then you know about iRobot. So we actually worked with that company to release the Qbot, which is essentially, <clears throat> it's based on the iRobot Create vehicle, which is, uh, the Qbot is designed for engineering, teaching, or research, so it can be used for both purposes. Uh, it's an autonomous ground vehicle and an ideal platform for research in an indoor lab environment. It can be used in more advanced multi-agent missions involving other Qbots and Qball UAVs, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. It is also a valuable tool for teaching both basic or advanced vehicle navigation and control. Okay, so the, this is the brochure. Uh, so once again, if you click 
on the left side here, you can open up the brochure. This is the Unmanned Vehicle Systems Laboratory brochure. So this, so Quanzer's been in the business of building unmanned vehicle systems for many, many years. Uh, we've been doing outdoor, indoor projects with the uh, DRDC. Uh, we've integrated many, many, I mean, every, uh, you know, quad rotor out, not every, but many of the quad rotors out there, we've, co companies out there, we've worked with them. Um, but really, uh, in the last few years, we've asked ourselves, how do we take what we know about unmanned systems and offer a, an indoor, an indoor laboratory, uh, laboratory system that's practical, that researchers can use, that professors, engineering professors can use to teach concepts. So something that's, you know, going to be durable. The things that the Kwanzers have, that Kwanzer has been known for now for more than two decades, we're trying to bring that now to the unmanned systems lab space. And it's been very successful. So I'm going to sh share a few things here with you. So if you open up the brochure, you can see that, again, our our software, the Quark software, which sits on top of MATLAB and Simulink, acts as your rapid control prototyping environment for everything in your system. So again, you know, I showed you a G, you know, I talked about GPS earlier. So when you're indoor, you don't have GPS. So you need a series of OptiTrack track cameras. So again, um, we offer those as a part of the system and they're integrated through Quark to MATLAB and Simulink. And many of you know what that already means, but just for those of you who don't, you know, any, the, the beauty of Kwanzaa Systems is, is that everything is integrated. Uh, you're, and, and as a professor or as a grad student, you're able to take your control algorithms, your control ideas, as long as you can put them into MATLAB and Simulink, you can bring them to life on your actual system. Uh, and here, like I said, there's the QBot, which we talked about, and then there are, there, then there's the QBall, which are the quad rotors. They're in cage, so they're safer. You know, you could have multiple quad rotors bump bump up against one another, and <clears throat> really, there's uh, there's just a lot of really cool things going on with that. So, here's the QBall again. You can download the specs here in more detail, but. The quad rotor is, uh, it is compatible with Quark and, and there's a ground station that comes along with it. There's an embedded computer, so there's a, a gumsticks PC that, that's targeted through Quark um, it, on the actual quad rotor as well. Like I said before, it comes with localization cameras and uh, it also can target the QBot. So this is a video uh, that got quite a few hits, it's about 20,000 hits. Uh, this has the, the cue ball inside of a cage. I'm going to go through a couple of these videos really quickly, and if you're interested in, you know, reading more and seeing more, you can always just Google it. So as you see, there's a cage around the entire cue ball, so it's very safe. It's uh, it's perfect for for a laboratory environment, uh, and uh, so quad rotor essentially means there's four rotors here that are spinning. And, uh, and there is an OptiTrack camera system that you see just in the edges of this video here that is helping to localize the system as well. So, It's the first time in the world that we are using uh, this kind of quadrature helicopter for teaching purposes for flight control system course and fault tolerant control system course. In this lab we have two cue balls. We use it for research and we go through many scenarios and very deep theory for fault tolerant control systems. Sometimes you like to evaluate some models, you like to fly with joystick and to see how the real system is close or far from your model. In fault tolerant control scenarios when we for example physical damage like splitting the tips of the propeller uh, then we can get the information about the saturation of PWM signal to four motors. For last flight, you can see the plots. The blue line is the trajectory we gave to cue ball, and the green line is the real position of the cue ball, which tracks the trajectory. Most of the students, they see the slides, they see the theory of flight, and they just hear some names, like roll, pitch, and yaw. But when they come to the lab and they see, they get familiar with the theory of control, they see something is moving, and all that knowledge you know, on paper or on computer now is going to be in real time. They get more ambitious, take more courses related to this area, and just to continue to work. 
So fault tolerant uh, control of the quadrotor helicopter using GSPID. So again, this is uh, just a whole bunch of videos that you can check out online. Uh, there's this is I, I believe this is a very old video. So you see here, this is posted back in 2009 uh, with the iPhone. So because it's open architecture, because all of our systems are open architecture through MATLAB and Simulink, you can easily you know connect your system to the iPhone. So here you're. You see the, the user is controlling the cue ball with the iPhone, right? And so, again, because of the open architecture nature, you're really able to do as much as you want. This is a UT Dallas, also using the cue ball. So here's a, a quick clip of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. Uh, we were there just a few months ago setting up the QBOT and the QBall systems for their controls lab. You can check out that video on YouTube. And I wanted to finish off with this, this last clip here of Cameron starting to speak. This is at the ASW a few years ago. And he really sums up what uh, the essence of Quantum Solution. Lab setup, which is a uh, fully integrated unmanned vehicle laboratory that we that we sell for researchers. And what we're doing is uh, showing this off and doing several different demonstrations, allowing people to see what the equipment can do and also to actually take control of the equipment themselves and fly the vehicle. So these these vehicles are uh, fully equipped with onboard computers um, that are uh, integrated with our powerful software platform. The software platform allows uh, researchers to quickly take these vehicles and begin working with them right away and uh, use them to rapidly uh, develop uh, applications for their research. This unmanned vehicle uh, laboratory is designed specifically for advanced researchers to develop this is our CEO, Paul Gilbert. control uh, algorithms for multiple vehicles, whether it be aerial or ground vehicles. It is uh, state-of-the-art and it allows uh, not just the development of controls, but it allows for rapid iteration between uh, difficult and advanced control regimes. So again, that's our, that's our CEO, Paul Gilbert. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you again soon.